Hello everyone. Today is the 26th of May. Well, it looks like restrictions really are beginning to ease. We're able to get out and do more. Part of what this means, though, is that we're likely to run into folk we haven't seen for a while, perhaps an age. And what that means is that we'll have to think about our greeting protocol. Will it be a fist bump or the more convoluted elbow to elbow engagement? Maybe you'll boldly revert to the handshake. A newspaper headline added to the options proclaiming hugging to be allowed. It did, however, note that this was not obligatory. But if you decide to dive in and be a hugger, a government official no less advises, don't hug too frequently, keep it short and keep your faces apart. You might conclude this calculated excuse for a hug hardly seems worth it. Whatever strategy you adopt, I'm sure there'll be the odd awkward moment as you go to do one thing and whoever you've just met try something else. Perhaps we could agree that whether we rush, step or tiptoe out into the world of post-restriction possibility, we'll all be improvising a new normal in our preferred way and with our different approach to life. Let's be honest, some of us like rules. Their structure and certainty bring us order and a sense of freedom within the boundary set. Some of us can't abide rules. They limit us and box us in and we just relish finding ways to break them. But beyond our attitudes to rules and how we're going to handle meeting people again, surely emerging from this pandemic invites us and indeed requires us to ask deeper questions about how we're going to live moving forward. So we could ask, was lockdown pressing pause or was it pressing reset? Will the new normal simply be a vaccinated version of the old normal? Will we just go back to the roar of traffic drowning out birdsong as it did before? Will we return to tuning out the social and economic dissonance all around us because we're so busy and actually we're doing okay? Might it be an idea to devise some new rules for living in our local communities and our countries as well as globally because you know as a result of coronavirus we now have the clearest picture we have perhaps ever had that the health of one country is caught up with the health of every other country. A long time ago the poet John Donne said no man is an island. We could expand this to no country is an island. We can't cut ourselves off. We really are all in this together. None of us will be safe until all of us are safe. As St Paul understood, when it comes to inherently, organically, unavoidably interconnected realities such as the human body, the global community and the biosphere we all call the earth. If one part suffers, every part suffers. Given this, could it be that what we need to navigate ourselves as a human family to a better place at this moment in history is an abundance, a bubbling up and a pouring out of empathy? Might it be that putting our feet empathetically in the shoes or the sandals or the paws of others is as good a way as any and better than many for finding good rules to live by? You know, even after we no longer have to wear them, perhaps we can remember the pandemic mask as a symbol a symbol of empathy, 
warned not to protect ourselves from others, but to protect others from ourselves. As Paul puts it immediately before his description in Philippians 2, verses 6 to 11, of how Jesus shows amazing empathy for us and all creation. Each of you should not only look out for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Could it be that empathy is a quality? whose time has come, and come big time. Think about that. Act on that. Live out of that. God bless. Bye for now.